Welcome everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for the third episode of LIRS Culture Kitchen. We are so glad to have Stacey Mei Yan Fong, the creator of the 50 Pies, 50 States project with us. Obviously, it has been a very difficult week for our country, um, so I think uh, we could all use a little comfort food. And these delicious looking butternut squash hand pies seem like they might do the trick. Um, but first, I'd be remiss not to talk about the insurrection last Wednesday. Um, as an immigrant, it was incredibly difficult to watch it as our democracy was literally attacked by an angry mob. Um, and for me personally, um, some of you know, uh, I was nine months old when I fled Sri Lanka uh, for the United States um, with my family. So I don't have recollection of my life before, but I've heard so many accounts this past week from those for whom the events at the Capitol brought back painful memories of the life that they left behind. Um, when my own parents found refuge here, they'd never imagined that they'd encounter this kind of political turmoil in the US. Um, you know, I've always had such reverence for American democracy and my heart goes out to all those watching these events unfold and fearing that the United States is not the beacon of democracy and civility it once promised to be. It might not seem like this has much to do with baking pies, but the truth is that Wednesday's events lead in every part of our lives as Americans and as immigrants. We know how much our nation must heal, um, which leads us to our guest this week, um, Stacey Mayan Fong, who is the creator, as I mentioned, of 50 Pies, 50 States. Um, Stacey set out to bake 50 pies, one for each of the United States. Um, she has called it an ode to the country she has chosen to call home, a love letter to the US. Um, so let me give you a little bit of background before we hear from her directly. So Stacey was born in Singapore and grew up in Hong Kong and Indonesia with a love for American culture, especially Dolly Parton and American diners. But as we'll talk about today, loving America also means recognizing its flaws. Stacey, welcome. Um, we're so thrilled to have you and I can't wait to make these hand pies. So let's just get right to it and I'll have you take it away. That sounds super fun. I'm so happy to be here. So. Since we're making butternut squash hand pies, we're going to start with roasting the squash. So I will get off my stool. Um, and what we're gonna do is, I've got a sheet pan ready and my oven is preheated to 425. And I have butternut squash all nicely cubed up here with a big bunch of rosemary, which is optional if you don't like it. And about two shallots kind of diced finely I mean, it's all going to get roasted up, so you'll be okay. And so I'm just going to dump all this onto the sheet pan. Including the sprig of rosemary, and then I'm going to coat all of it in three tablespoons of olive oil. And then just some salt and pepper too. question that was just asked is, can you use dried rosemary? Yes, you can. I just had a lot of fresh leftover. So. <laughs> Fair enough. And so I kind of came up with this recipe because I'm part of a CSA and we've been getting a ton of squash. So I thought, and it's also like very seasonal eating root vegetables right now. So all right, I'm going to wash my hands really quick and then put that guy in the oven. Yeah, I think that uh, between Thanksgiving and Christmas, um, and we love butternut squash, but we've always been making soup. Uh, so I love the idea of, of a, a different recipe um, that relies on one of my favorite vegetables. So that's gonna go in the oven for about 30 to 35 minutes. Like everybody's oven is a little bit different. So once everything starts to get soft and lovely, um, that's when you can pull it out let it cool for a little while, and then you're gonna mix in um, about a tablespoon of balsamic vinegar. So we'll just let that hang out in there. And um, I went ahead and made some earlier, and I know you did as well, Krish. So um, we, we can skip ahead to assembling the pies if you'd like. Let's do it. Sounds good? Okay. Yeah. 
Ah, oh, perfect. I've got my trays. Better not squash, okay? Okay, so um, you bought pre-made pie dough, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to take the pie dough out and I'm going to lightly flour my work surface. So let's... And I'm just going to roll out the pie dough. Be really careful. And then do you have a cookie cutter or a mason jar or? Yeah, so I am gonna use a mason jar. Ooh, that's perfect. Okay. So you might actually use um, a teaspoon instead of, um, I'll get a mason jar too. So you can make the same thing. So if you're using a mason jar, there are obviously many different mouth widths. So I have a lot of them. <laughs> There is the wide width and then the kind of like smaller one. So okay. which one do you have? Um, so I have this kind, okay. I don't know if you can tell what it is. I also have a uh, slightly thinner version if that doesn't work. Okay, this actually works perfect. So we oh. can use this one so that okay. we can both do. Okay. Yeah. So you're gonna go ahead and use your mason jar and kind of push it and cut out little circles. I see, so this is actually a original recipe. Yes. Very cool. I really like like fall flavors and I feel like sometimes root vegetables get a bad name because they're like kind of boring, but I feel like with the feta and balsamic vinegar, it kind of like brightens things up. Yep. I love pickly things, so. Okay, and so mine's getting stuck a little bit in my mason jar. That's okay, right? Just pull it out. Yeah, just pull it out and you can flour the lip of your mason jar as well. Okay. Oh, okay. I see. Yep. Okay, great. I'll do that. That's a great idea. Okay. And typically how many, um, will you, uh, kind of how many rounds will you get from kind of, uh, you know, a normal. From uh, one round, I've gotten one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. And oh. so that'll make um, five mini pies because since we're using a smaller mason jar, we're gonna double up. Okay, got it. Pie okay. Instead of folding it over like you would like an empanada. Yep. Okay. So that's kind of like the fun part of using like a pre-made pie dough is that you can make it kind of any shape that you want. Yep. Um, I have like a larger cookie cutter. You can make it a square, you can make it a circle. Like it's kind of, the best yeah. like you can riff on it. So yeah. like I'll cut some using my other cookie cutter and then we can see all the different ways. Yeah, I sort of enjoy the, the cookie cutting in the sense that like, it's always fun to sort of imagine how you can most efficiently or, or kind of best utilize the, um, the area. Right. And then also like, you're like, how much pie crust to filling can I make? Right. <laughs> what shapes can I eat? <laughs> yeah. That's great. Okay. All right. Okay. So take the remnant dough um, and put it on the side and then we have our circles. Okay, great. Yep. Um, and then another question that we just got is, uh, I'm not a fan of feta. What other cheese can I use? Oh, you can use whatever cheese you want. <laughs> I mean, right. yeah, I feel like a low mo moisture mozzarella would be great too, because it'll melt really well and just kind of like glue everything. That's such a bad word, glue. <laughs> It'll just bring everything together inside yeah. and you might get a really beautiful cheese pull, which would also be very exciting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, you're all, it's all cut? Yep. Okay, cool. So for the next step, um, since we're doing something a little bit smaller, you're gonna need a teaspoon 
And then I have a little pastry brush, but you can use your finger and then the egg wash. So like one beaten egg and then also whatever cheese that you're planning to use. Okay. I should have done my created my egg wash in advance. It's um, okay. okay. It'll be it's really fast. Okay. Yeah, I would just beat your egg and then just add like a little bit of a splash of water to it splash to make water. it easier to paint. Yeah. So I've got my circles. Perfect. Coconut squash and our feta cheese. Okay. So I'm going to do it on a white plate so you can see it a little easier. Mm -hmm. So since we have little circles, we're just going to take a little bit of the filling, put it in the center, and then take a little bit of the cheese and put that in the center too. And then we're just going to egg wash the edges. And then get a secondary dough circle and just cover the top. And then you're going to kind of press around the edges. You're kind of making like a little ravioli. Mm -hmm. And then with a fork, you're just going to push all the edges down to seal them. So you should end up with a little buddy like this. Oh, very nice. Okay, all right. So I'm clearly a little further behind here. Okay. Okay. Right, our first test one, I think maybe I spilled a little bit too much, but. and then just put it aside already. Okay. All right. And then um, while we're creating these, um, would love sure. to ask you, Stacy, like, you know, why why did you choose um, this particular dish? Uh, you know, I know when we reached out to you, given that you have baked so many pies, um, you had a lot of options. Um, any particular reason for choosing this one? So I thought it would be really nice to make something seasonal and like uh, all the ingredients are pretty accessible. And um, I really love eating squash in the winter months. Um, I kind of, because I'm part of a CSA in Brooklyn, I get to eat like seasonally, which is really nice. Yeah. And so, yeah. and. Because of my CSA, I had six butternut squash laying around and I was like, what am I going to do with this? <laughs> and when um, you had reached out about doing like a vegetarian recipe, I was so excited because I was like, I cannot eat an, like no more butternut squash soup. Like I was just eating it roasted. I was just like thinking of so many different ways. And then I was like, oh my gosh, if I just made like little hand pies that I can hold and snack on while I'm binging Bridgerton on Netflix, um, yeah. it'll just go. You know, Really yeah. make my day. Yeah. And and I'm also just curious, so why pies when you undertook the project? So I started really thinking about like my place in America and um like all my friends could go home to their childhood bedrooms and stuff. And I was just like, what is my home? And I always felt like pie was like synonymous to home in America. Like there, it was always in diners. It's always like on the table during like all American holidays, like 4th of July, Thanksgiving, like there's always a pie. And one of my favorite TV shows is Pushing Daisies. And in Pushing Daisies, um, there's a pie baker named Ned and he says this line that um, candy is a blowing carnival through town, pie is home and people always wanna come home. And that kind of like made me really think about um, 
America and pie. And I feel like those two things kind of like get said in the same breath, like it's super synonymous with each other. So that's how I got into my project. I was like, how can I use this like blank canvas, which is pie and like learn about every single state yeah. and kind of like encapsul encapsulate like what, um, like my journey through each state, like in pie form. Yeah. And I feel like because I went like savory or sweet, like it yeah. kind of like opened up the world for me. Cause I'm a very, I'm a big fan of savory pies. So. And then, um, do you have a favorite pie? Oh, uh, okay. So my, I don't have a favorite out of my 50 because that's just, I just can't do that. You know, <laughs> I just, I just can't That's pick a very favorite. diplomatic. <laughs> yeah, I just can't pick a favorite child. Um, but personally, like my favorite, like I can eat it like any time of year, any time of day is apple pie. Like I just love apple pie. And um, my friend Pete actually introduced me to eating apple pie with like a big hunk of sharp cheddar. And that's like my new favorite way to eat apple pie. So it's apple pie is warm with just a little bit of cheese and like that whole like sweet savory combination. I just love it so much. Oh, and man. then my favorite um, summertime pie is um, a strawberry rhubarb pie because you can only really get it like for like a couple months during the summer. Yeah. yeah. And my favorite custard pie is a key lime pie. Yeah. <laughs> so so I, when you said apple pie, I immediately started thinking ice cream. Um, so cheese is an interesting combination. I mean, it makes sense. Uh, makes sense. Yeah. Very but, popular in Vermont. <laughs> I see. Okay. Yeah. That is very cool. Okay. So you're clearly done. I am almost, I have one more to go. Okay. Perfect. I actually have a couple left, so I okay. will. Okay, great. And then also tell me, cause I know we were chatting just about um, baking. Yes. So when did you first start baking? So I've always really loved like cooking and baking and all that good stuff. And so I started kind of like watching a lot of cooking shows on TV. Mm -hmm. and growing up on TV, it was always Julia Child, of course, and um, Martin Yan of Yan Can Cook. And those were like the things that I watched all the time. And my dad had a ton and ton of cookbooks that I would just like thumb through and look at all these beautiful pictures. And uh, it also helped that my dad worked in the hotel industry. So I was like exposed to like restaurants and fine dining and all that good stuff from a really young age. So it helped me really, you know, develop my champagne taste on a beer budget. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so food has always just been like a way in my family, especially where like we gather around a table and would discuss things. And when I was younger, I started taking over um, our family dinners on a Sunday night. Wow. So I would like pick something that I would want to cook. My dad would help me figure out like the ingredients, how to get it done. And then I would just have like free reign of the kitchen. So mm -hmm. that was something really fun that mm -hmm. I got to do. <laughs> And so are you the, when, when you mentioned taking over, um, are you the best uh, cook or baker in the family? Me and my sisters are all actually really good cooks, but I'm going to say I'm the best because they're not present. <laughs> awesome. And then where did you grow up? Um, so I was born in Singapore and I lived there for a couple years. And then because of my dad's job, um, I moved to Indonesia when I was two and then after Indonesia, we moved to Hong Kong when I was five. So that's kind of like the most I remember is like growing up in Hong Kong. And it was such a wonderful place to live because Hong Kong's kind of like, for me, like the center of Asia, like you can get anywhere, like super close. And it gave me a lot of opportunities to travel and stuff. So that was really nice. And then, but all the while, like we would always come on vacation to um, the United States. And I always just like, kind of like, really liked it over here. Like I loved like the music, the culture. I found it just so interesting that one country that was so big was so different state to yeah. state. Yeah. Like the landscape, uh, even accents, like the way people sound and the food people eat. Like I just found that so fascinating, yeah. especially because um, like the country I was born in Singapore and the country I grew up in Hong Kong, they're both pretty small, <laughs> like small islands. And just like this whole idea of like, 
going on the great American road trip was something that I found really romantic and really wonderful as a kid and something that like I always wanted to do. So, yeah. Okay. All right. That's cool. Okay. So we have the pies now. Okay. Awesome. Um, I am going to wash my hands really quick. And then what's a fun thing you can do with all your leftover filling is you could make a fried rice with it, or you could eat it with pasta, or you could just eat it with fried egg on it. It's really versatile and very delicious. Lovely, yeah. Okay, so right. if you could put all your pies on like parchment paper or foil on a sheet pan. And then what we're gonna do next is just use the remainder of your egg wash and just brush the top of each one. Just brush the tops, okay. And Stacey, what does that do? Um, so it kind of helps it get all like golden brown and beautiful in the oven. There's nothing more sad than a pale crust. <laughs> Like whenever like you go to bakeries and stuff and you see all the beautiful golden glistening pastries. Yeah. It just looks so like delicious and enticing. So you can um, wash it with different things like egg or you can do milk. Um, if you have heavy cream, you can use that. But since we were using egg to seal it, we might as well egg wash it too. Okay. And then after you've washed all the pies that you've made, um, I would just put a little salt and pepper on the top. And then these guys, these little sweet babets that you've made are going to go in the oven for at 400 degrees for 25 minutes. Stacey, do you kind of, what do you normally um, serve these as? Are they an appetizer? Are they a meal? They can be both. Like if you eat like two or three, I feel like they would be a meal. Um, or like tonight, I'll probably eat them with like a side salad or something, which would be really yeah. nice. Or I made some pickled beets. So I'm pretty excited about eating them with those. Okay. And so after the 25 minutes, and you let them cool on the tray. Don't try and pick them up or eat them. Not that I haven't done something like that before. Um, <laughs> they're gonna look like this. Oh, wow, that looks beautiful. Yeah, so just really nice and golden brown. So I did like kind of a big disc shape. So that's like the two crusts stacked together wow. or you could fold them over and make little half moon empanada shapes. Wow, okay. Right, and, and you said and said you said how long for the oven because I realized I should set it. Oh, 25 minutes, yeah. At 400. Okay. And then the inside should be all like flaky and delicious. All right. Okay, great. Okay. Well, I am excited to get those um, into and out of the oven. Um, and while we're waiting to have those bake, um, we'd love to just Chat with you. So obviously, um, you know, you've had a love for the United States and American culture uh, since you were a child, as you were mentioning. Um, so what attracted you to the United States? I feel like, you know, like in reading books and listening to the music and watching movies, like it was just like the land of opportunity, like you could do whatever you want. And um, 
my dad always told me and my sisters that the only limits that we had were the limits that we set for ourselves and we could do like whatever we wanted. And I feel like, I mean, within reason, um, I feel like that's like what's so, what was so wonderful about like, I do come from a Chinese like traditional family, but my dad was really open to like conversations about like what we wanted to do. Like I wanted to pursue design, like, um, my middle sister is in film and animation and like he always like kind of like let us like explore anything that we were interested in and for me um whenever we came over to america i was like and we would go to like miami san francisco new york like it was all these like culturally different places but they were all the food was so diverse and i was just like i want to live here like i want to go to school here i want to see what it's all about and um, I ended up going to school in Savannah, Georgia, which was um, a really, really big change from living in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. But I had applied to schools in New York as well. And um, I was like, you know what, I'm going to break out of my bubble in Hong Kong and I'm going to go somewhere where I know no one and I'm just going to like start like my own life. And that I will say is still the best decision I've ever made in my life, no matter how scared or homesick I was for the first two months I was at in Savannah. Um, I feel like just taking yourself like out of your comfort zone, like really like forces you to kind of like make your own life. And like um, my project is a testament to like the really nice life that I've built for myself here and all the people I've met along the way that I like give the pies to each from each state to like there are people that I've met um from college there are people that I've met through people from college and just like yeah or like um for North Dakota I dedicated the pie to this very nice lady that I met um, in an Uber pool when I was in, in LA. And she had told me that she used to um, enter like the North Dakota pie competition. And she won with like her um, sour cream raisin pie. So yeah, it's just like, I feel like that's the nice part about America is like, you never know who you're going to meet and you never know who you're going to talk to. You just got to be like open and I love talking a lot, so I think that really helps. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, you know, uh, America, I think, is the land of innovation, and what better way to encapsulate it than sour cream and raisins in a pie? Right, I know. It's so crazy how, like, regional everything is. Mm -hmm. um, like, even when you talk about, like, barbecue or um, at the beginning of the pandemic, I decided to explore um, a type of pie called the desperation pie, and so like that, like that sounds like so depressing. And in my mind, it was only associated with the Great Depression, mm -hmm. but it's actually associated with seasonal depression. So like in the winter months when you don't have like fresh fruit and stuff, but you always had like milk, sugar and butter, like what could you do with that? And while I was exploring that, I noticed that even in desperation pies, it was regional, like, um, in Appalachia, it was vinegar pies, and those pies were supposed to mimic like the tartness of apples. And then in further south and in Indiana, it was like chess pies or like sugar cream pies. So it was really cool to find out that even in times of desperation, people knew that they wanted to keep pie on the table and they wanted to find a way to do that. And like, yeah, like America's all about innovation and just like making best of what you have and doing better. So, yeah. Yeah, no, that's awesome. So I do want to talk to you a little bit about the um, the, the project again, um, but I wanted to just backtrack for a second. So could you tell us a little bit about growing up um, in Indonesia and Hong Kong? Sure. So um, I definitely had like a really blessed life. Like we were expats in both countries and um, I got to go to really amazing schools. And in Hong Kong, I went through the ESF um, English Schools Foundation. So I went through um, the British school system, which was really fun. And what was really nice about growing up in Hong Kong is that we had access to like a lot of different countries. And within Asia, it's really affordable to travel between all the countries. So there was that. And then also because I went to an international school, I grew up and met people from like all different backgrounds. And something that's definitely like, um, that I still think about that was so cool was we had um, a course called Religious Studies. And on a field trip for Religious Studies, we got to go to every single um, religion's like house of worship. So we got to go to like a Sikh temple, a Hindu temple, like um, a synagogue, a, ch a 
Catholic church, a Christian church. Like it was just like really awesome to grow up in such a like multicultural environment. And I feel like it's made me like a very open person and like someone that like wants to like listen and learn everybody's story. That's awesome. Um, so let's talk about the project in a little bit more depth. Um, so can you talk about what the project involves, um, meaning like from research to recipe development, um, and then how many have you made um, and how many do you have left? Okay, so I have made 44 out of the 50 pies. So you're close to the, okay. I'm very close to the end. Um, my goal was actually to be done by the end of 2020, but um, things obviously changed and I couldn't travel or like safely give the pies to the people that I wanted to. So I decided to put a pause on the project. But so how I start everything is I am like a sucker for an Excel chart. So there is a spreadsheet. It's very, very detailed and um, it's got like the state, um, what some of the state fruits, foods, regional desserts, like all that good stuff, like in one column. And then it's got who I'm going to give the pie to. And so I always um, make this joke, but it's really what I do is I think about my project three pies at a time, because like when I first started, 50 seemed like such an overwhelming number. Um, so I kind of like look at my pies, like two or three pies at a time, depending on how complicated I would like to make the pie for myself. Like for example, the Nevada pie, um, that ended up taking about a month and a half, almost two months of planning because um, for Nevada, I decided to do an all you can eat buffet pie. So what I did with that is I went on every single casino's website and I looked at all their all you can eat buffet menus and I kind of like wrote down like what were the common things between each one and the pie ended up being um, eight different compartments um, like single pie cups um, and they were four savory and four sweet of like things that I like there was like prime rib Alaskan king crab a Caesar salad and then on the sweet side there was a fruit tart a cheesecake and an ice cream sundae so it's kind of like you got and I wanted with that pie I wanted to celebrate like just kind of like the opulence and the excess and just like all the fun that you can have in Vegas and all the fun that I've had in Vegas in one pie. <laughs> That's really cool. Wow. Um, so at LIRS is actually headquartered in Baltimore. Um, so I've got to ask, uh, what is the Maryland pie and how did you decide on the recipe? So for Maryland, I knew that it had to have Old Bay in it and I knew it had to have crab in it. Right. <laughs> so, and so I, I actually um, went to school with a bunch of people from Maryland. So they were definitely a lot of help for me. And so it ended up being um, a crab dip pie with a hot old bay crust. And it was so delicious. Yeah, sounds great. I'm sure <laughs> yeah. there's going to be many who might want to check that recipe out um, when you uh, when you publish it. Um, so you called pies um, a love letter uh, to the United States. So how did you, you know, how did developing um, the recipes inform your understanding of, um, you know, American history uh, and culture? Because obviously it sounds like there was a lot um, that went into your research. So I'm sure you have some reflections on that. Totally. So I feel like what's so fun about this is I get to find all these like niche things and like this is like my journey or like my interpretation of like each state and whether I've been to it or know someone from it. And for example, for South Dakota, I was like totally stumped. I had no idea what I was gonna do. I'd never been to South Dakota. I'd never met anyone from South Dakota. And it just so happened that my friend Matt had done who got the Massachusetts pie. Um, he met this guy that's a historian in South Dakota. So through pie, I met other people to give pie to, which was very fun. And um, through Eric, who got the South Dakota pie, um, I learned, he told me about the sous chef, Sean Sherman. And so I bought his cookbook, read it like cover to cover and was just like fascinated with um, Native American cuisine. So for the South Dakota pie, it ended up being um, a wild rice pudding pie with sunflower milk that I made 
at home and then it was like a sweetened with like berries and bergamot and it had this like pineapple maple crunch on and like I would have never gotten to that pie if I didn't like go through all these different channels yeah. I feel like that's what's so wonderful it's some of the pies are like more straightforward or I get gifted recipes from people's like grandparents or their mom or just like something that they've made a lot um and they're from that state. And I feel like that's another thing that's been a really beautiful part of it is that like, I'm just like extending my American family further and further. <laughs> yeah, no, that's awesome. Um, so I want to talk uh, a minute about kind of your experience as an immigrant. Um, so I read in your interview in Eater um, that you got your green card in 2016. So congratulations. Um, and, and what did that feel like for you? It was such to be honest, it was a relief, like a huge relief, like being on a visa, I can only describe as being on a roller coaster, like the highs are so high, like when your visa gets approved, there's no better feeling. And the lows are so low, because you live with such a sense of uncertainty, like you don't know how, lo how much longer you have somewhere if you're not sponsored, or if, for example, like earlier in the pandemic, when all the F1 student visas were, um, like where they were having like problems on whether they were going to be extended or what was going to happen like that sense of uncertainty or like is something that you live with when you are on a visa in the United States and it's it's honestly horrible like I wouldn't wish it on anyone because like just not knowing like what's going to happen like your livelihood or the way you live is like dependent on someone else you know like um when I got my green card it was such a sense of relief because I could live wherever I wanted in the States. I could work wherever I wanted. I didn't have to work at specific jobs that were like um, gonna give me a visa or gave me the opportunity for sponsorship. Like I could do, it gave me like the freedom to really like set my roots here. And it also, when I got, when my visa got approved, I was like, this is my home now. Like I chose it and it's accepted me. <laughs> and like, this is where I'm gonna set my roots. Um, I have been here for, including college, uh, 14 years. Uh, 2020 was actually my 10 year anniversary of living in New York, which I'm very proud that I've lived a decade in um, New York City. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like when I got my green card, it was just the biggest sense of relief. And I honestly, it was one of the happiest moments of living in the United States. Fantastic. Yeah. Um and, and I want to talk a, a little bit about, um, in the same interview, uh, you know, you talked about what it was like once, um, in your mind, America had, you know, fell off a pedestal, um, you know, in light of the presidential election in 2016. Um, so those feelings have no doubt been magnified by this past week's events. Can you share um, a little bit about kind of how you have felt um, recently as well as over the last few years? I feel like the, I feel like the only word is like disappointed. Like I was just like disappointed because I just thought that like this country stood for so much more and so much better. But I feel like at the end of the day, I still have so much hope. Like the inauguration is in a few days, like a week or so. And like America has decided that they want to make change. And I feel like with all the like social change and stuff, like and everybody taking action to make a better America for tomorrow and like stand up and speak up and write their politicians, call their senators, like use their right to vote. Like all of that affects like people like me that are on a visa, like other immigrants, like all these decisions. And I feel like we hit a low in America, but once you hit a low, the only way you can go is up. So I, I feel like I am only hopeful and like, yeah, I think like we are on track or like going to make some big change and I'm really excited to see what America has to offer. Um, I am, I can apply for citizenship in a couple years. So that'll be like an exciting time to see what America is like then. And 
to see if I want to go down that road. So yeah, I'm very hopeful. That's all I can be yeah. is hopeful. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of people share that sentiment with you. Um, you're definitely not alone. Um, so now I'm going to open it up to some Q and A. And I know we have kind of a range of questions that are specific to the recipe, um, as well as some comments, I think, to cheer you on. Um, so one question that comes from Valerie is, how about egg roll wrappers instead of pie dough? Oh, that would totally work. Yeah. All right, great. Um, then uh, ever try putting sharp cheese in the dough of an apple pie? I have, and it is so delicious. <laughs> that is interesting. Okay, because clearly you all, you both are onto something that I have not tried. Um, one question from Mary is, might you put a sprinkle of curry on top? Ooh, yes, that would be delicious. Yeah, for sure. Okay, this is I feel great. like the best part is that I've kind of like given you guys a recipe that's like pretty blank slate and you can kind of like customize it to like your taste and like whatever you want. Do you want to eat it with like hot sauce or do you want like a creamier, like you could dip this in ranch. Like it would just yeah. be delicious. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 no, I feel like it's a, it's a great base. Um, okay. on which Bill, um, uh, another question is if I wanted to make my own pie crust, do you have a recipe that you recommend? Yes. Um, there is an all butter pie crust recipe on food 52 that Erin McDowell, who's one of like my pie gurus, like I follow her religiously. Um, she just put out a cookbook called the book of the book on pie. If you guys want to check that out and yeah, her all butter crust is lovely. Okay. All right. That's great. Um, and Annie, thanks you for the tucker tie and the hand towel um, onto your apron. Uh, how do I not know that? <laughs> What's your rhetorical? Yeah, it's, um, it's definitely super, super handy because then it's just there when you wash your hands or if you get something scummy. So yeah, that's great. It's the best. <laughs> um, so uh, one comment is uh, from Kimberly is, I'm from Seattle, Washington. So I bet the Washington pie is apple. Um, and then uh, another question um, uh, comment is, um, is there a cookbook available with the recipes? The South Dakota pie sounds awesome. Um, so that is a question comment from Kay, but we also had another comment from Kimberly saying, I hope you make a book of these recipes and stories, I will buy it. That, yeah. is, um, that is my dream for this project is to write a cookbook. So I'm just gonna put that out in the universe <laughs> that I want to do that. And yeah, I think it would be really cool to just like have a cookbook with like all the recipes, all the stories of the people I've met along the way, some fun facts about each state. And yeah, um, whenever that happens, I will be really excited about it too. <laughs> okay. So crossing my fingers. Yeah, no, that's, it out in the universe. that's very cool. Um, and uh, if any anyone else has other questions to ask Stacey, um, please don't hesitate uh, before we wrap up. Um, just one other question um, uh, about well, sorry, two questions. Um, they're related to cuisine. Um, so what appeals to you about American cuisine um, and how would you define it? It's so hard to say like what American cuisine is, especially like living in New York. Um, you can have like, for me in my neighborhood, like Jamaican food is American cuisine. Like, cause, and like, that's, I think the beauty of America is that it can be whatever you want it to be. And even between like, the East Coast and the West Coast and everything in between, like everybody eats such different food depending on like what the land is like there. Even with like grocery stores, like I've noticed like a lot of the state foods and stuff like reflect um, what's grown in the state. Like I didn't know that the first peach tree was grown in Delaware. And like, I think that that is really wonderful. And so I feel like American food is like whatever you, your America is like everybody's America and their definition of America is so different. And yeah, for me, American food would be pie, <laughs> but um, yeah, it kind of, it kind of depends. Like here in New York, like American food could be like a bagel or it could be a bacon, egg and cheese sandwich or a pizza. Or I think that's the beauty of this country is that it can be whatever you want it to be for you. And yeah. 
Yeah, that's great. Well, and and just to draw on your own personal um, diverse background, uh, how would you compare compare American cuisine to say that of Hong Kong or Indonesia? Oh, it's so. I feel like it's so different, and there are really good Indonesian restaurants um, here, and really, really, there's really good Chinese food in Hong Kong. Um, my dad. Um, always said that like the Chinese food in Hong Kong in um, New York is very comparable and very wonderful. So I feel like it's just diversity and it's like just different dishes. And I love American Chinese food and I love traditional Chinese food. So yeah, it's it's nice that like I get to go home to a different culture and like experience new foods that I hope make it over to the States. And yeah, like in Queens alone in New York City, like you could go um, to a Korean neighborhood or, or a Chinese neighborhood, or like you can just eat so many different kinds of food. So yeah, I think that's pretty nice. Yeah. And, and do you feel like where you've lived has influenced your cooking today? I think so. Um, I feel like I am very open to trying new foods and that's definitely like my dad made us eat everything. And um, growing up, we cooked a lot using chopsticks and I definitely still do that now. <laughs> like I, when I made my Ohio pie, um, I made my, the Buckeyes for the top of it, which, um, are like peanut butter powdered sugar balls that are dipped in chocolate. Instead of using the traditional, uh, toothpick, I use chopsticks because I was more comfortable with it. So <laughs> yeah, I definitely, because of my upbringing, use chopsticks for everything. <laughs> That's so cool. Um, and then uh, the one other question we've got um, from the audience before we start wrapping up is from Serafina. Um, what's next after you finish all 50 pies? Um, do you have a subsequent pro project? Not think? right now. I feel like I can't wait to get back to my last six pies when it's safe for me to travel and safe for me to gather with friends. And I feel like I know for sure for number five zero, which is Wyoming, I will be going to Wyoming and it'll just be kind of a wild way to end um, a very long journey that I've been on. So I'm not thinking ahead so far just yet. Um, I'm definitely focused on finishing the last six, but there will be definitely a lot of side pies in between. I've been baking constantly. Um, in 2020, I only baked 30 pies, I think, which is much lower than my usual 52. But <laughs> like, cause I make random pies when I'm experimenting with things. And yeah, so I'm focused on finishing the last six for right now. That's awesome. And, um, and just so the audience knows, I know when we were, uh, you know, we, we were chatting before um, actually starting the cooking demonstration. Um, tell us how, you know, cooking, baking relates to your, this project relates to your day, day job, because this isn't what you used to kind of always do, right? Yeah. So um, because of all that 2020 was, um, I was a handbag designer, which I still am, and um, but I started working at a bakery and a bakery that um, is one of my favorite bakeries in the city. So it's allowed me to learn so much working in a professional kitchen. And yeah, I feel like with all the chaos that 2020 brought, it also brought a lot of light and a lot of wonderful new opportunities for me. And yeah, I'm really stoked that my day job is baking and when I come home, I get to bake more and I get to read cookbooks before I go to bed and just like really immerse myself in this world. I feel really lucky that I got to do that. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I do feel like, um, you know, I myself am, am, and as any viewer can I think probably pick up on quickly, I am not a great cook or chef, baker. Um, I, I think I get an A for effort, uh, but it does not come quite naturally to me, but it has, um, you know, to the extent that there is any silver lining to 2020, um, you know, spending more time at home with family has led me to, um, now starting, I, I bake my own sourdough bread. Um, and I am awesome. now starting I can't even do that. Like that's amazing. Oh, no, no, th that would be the easiest thing for you. Um, but now I'm trying to figure out how to, uh, brew kombucha, um, so, that's awesome. you know, it's, it's yeah, it's uh, hopefully we'll look back at these times and think of how we were able to um, grow uh, and, and, and find time for things we may not have been able to pick up in the past. Right. And I feel like there's nothing more fulfilling or rewarding for me 
than like making food and gifting it and serving it to someone that I love as like, it's like a thing that you can hold that's delicious and wonderful. And like, it's such a nice, like tangible way to be like, I love you and I appreciate you. And like, I did this thing that I put a lot of care into for you. So yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I know that my timer is going off, so I, I will also try to wrap this up. Um, one last question that came in that I do want to ask um, from Kimberly is, is that a pie picture on the wall? It is. It's a painting that my friend Caitlin did of a pie that I made um, and brought to the park. So yeah, it is a pie painting and there are painted pie plates on my wall too. Um, so yeah, it's all pie all the time. The thing. That's awesome. That's so cool. Well, I am very excited now that my pies are done um, to really dig in. But Stacey, let me just really say um, from the bottom of our hearts at LIRS, uh, we are so grateful for you finding the time um, to, uh, to take on the project, to share um, what's behind us and uh, what's behind it and where um, it stands. It seems like such an um, exciting, important, um, thoughtful project. Um, I think we all know that food is is what brings us together. And during very challenging times such as these, um, I think it helps us get through. Um, so really thank you uh, for joining us, for the audience. Um, you know, you can follow, uh, you know, you'll get a recording of this as well as the recipe um, in your inboxes. Um, and if you go to the website, uh, at www.lirs.org. You can watch this um, as well as the previous um, Culture Kitchen experiences at your leisure. Uh, thanks again for tuning in. Happy New Year to everyone. Um, stay safe and healthy. And thank you again, Stacy, for joining us. Thank you so much. It was an absolute honor and so much fun. Take care. Thanks. Bye. Bye.